So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we are joined by an awesome star from Down Under, star of Seriously Red, coming to all digital platforms on the 13th of Feb- February. It's Crew Bolan. Crew, welcome to the show, my love. Thanks so much for having me. Do you know what? I'm so, so excited because I wanted to, first of all, say congratulations on an awesome movie. It's probably probably the best 94 minutes I have spent in many, many years. Um, so congratulations. It's just, it's just amazing. It really is. If you could tell all the wonderful viewers and listeners uh, a bit about the movie and whom you play. So it's about, um, I play a character called Raylene Red Delaney. Um, Her nickname is Red. I'm all about nicknames. I think we all are in Australia a little bit. um, And she is in a nine-to-five job and she just doesn't fit in, probably like most of us. Um, And she doesn't feel like she's been taken seriously, so she decides to take herself seriously by becoming a Dolly Parton impersonator. And to figure out who she is, she first has to become someone else. Mm. I mean, not only do you star as a lead, but you also wrote it as well. So what inspired you to put pen to paper and and start this journey of Seriously Red? So I was doing a play with this, uh, my co-founder, Shannon Murphy, who's a director who's doing a lot of work over in England at the moment. And uh, I was worried about my next job. And I wasn't quite that I wanted and I wasn't sure if I was getting taken seriously because I can do drama and I can do comedy but I'm kind of slipping between the cracks and my dad would always tell us his daughters you go out there girls you 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 do what you want to do and you may make a success of yourselves and and I was like looking at my dad going I'm just I'm not a success I'm not I'm not successful I don't feel it I don't look it um so I started to write to figure out what my meaning of success was mm. and why we wanted it. What does it look like? And when you have it, do you know if you've got it? And so very quickly, the answer for me was for my version of success is Dolly Parton. I just think she's got it all going on. She's business. She's talented. She's funny. She looks like she does. And she's always in control of the joke. Even if people mm. try to put her down, she always comes out really classy and, and gorgeous. And I find her interesting, you know, in, especially in this world of social media and you need to show more and more and more. And really, Dolly shares so much, but we don't know that actually that much about her. She's actually mm. quite, quite private. And f- she's the only person we can all agree on. So, <laughs> yeah. That's where I started. I was like, she's at my everything. I, the first quote I, I stuck up in my apartment was, you got to work a dream. you got to put feet and wings on it. And so I was like, right, I'm going to work my dream. I'm going to write a part that I find interesting and funny and joyous and ugly and beautiful and skinny and fat and everything that we all are. <laughs> um, and I want to – I want to – I want to figure out, try and figure out what success is. So that's 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 how it sort of and, started. And and Dolly is is definitely all of that. So so you write you write this story, and I've got to say this film is absolutely chuck a block with Dolly's amazing songs. So how on earth did you get the permission? Because it can be quite difficult to get permission to have songs in films, but not only that to perform them, you know, within the the film itself. So how did you get permission? from Dolly and her estate. So I've got this um, spre- this friend, Rose Byrne. Don't know if you've heard of her. No. Um, <laughs> a little bit famous, someone. Um, so she was um, filming a movie and she hired a car and drove across the state with a printed out version of the script to meet Danny Nozell, which is Dolly's manager. So she walked into his office gave him the script and said, we've got 50 cents. This is a love letter to Dolly Parton. (laughs) We can't do it without her blessing and we can't do it without her music. Would you please pass it on to her and see if she's, if it at all tickles her fancy. So then she read it twice that night, um, gave us her blessing, said she'll do what she can to help with the music. And um, so we're on our way. Mm. 
Well, on our way in that in that sense, but it took us a long time to convince everybody else to you know give us a little bit of, um, you know, trust us that we can we can deliver a film. And and she ov- ov- obviously liked it because she gave her seal of approval on Twitter, and that must must have been s- such a proud moment for you as a person that has you know grown this from from the seats. Um, so on screen, uh, you play an awesome Dolly impersonator. So what sort of work had to go into that? Because it was just so much fun to watch. We we had a great team. Um, that helped put together the looks and the the journey that she goes on from a, a pretty average dolly into a pretty good, great dolly and then a pretty on a little bit unhinged dolly. Um, and it was so much fun. And I really underestimated how much creativity all the other different, I don't know, I didn't really, I thought about it, but... I was really taken aback by how all the different different departments, of course, jumped on board. It's not just like jeans and t-shirt. It's mm. like they, and it's not you know, yeah. It's 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 not period that you have to stick to any kind of particular thing. It was like anything goes. Let's just have some fun with how much you know how much we could spend. So it was. It, we we really had a, a, what what some of us called like a blessed shoot. Which yeah. it just ha- was seamless. Everyone was, everyone had the same idea and the same creative input, and everyone was ready to stay a little bit extra longer. Just little, little fun piece of cinema done. Mm. And and it's superbly done. It really is on 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 screen. And we talk about the singing side. So you actually sang all the songs. Along, along with uh, Daniel Weber as well, who played um, Ke- Kenny. I've got to say that yeah. must have been so much fun to do. And how much work actually went into that? Because your voice is, is incredible. It really is. Oh, thanks. It was it was tricky because it was COVID. Um, we got to sometimes sing live and then sometimes um, go in and record in the studio but we're up in near Byron Bay so not everyone got to do that at the same time so the all of that was actually a little bit tricky um and and some and some of it was post so yeah beautifully and everyone just did a Gracie Otto did just a beautiful job making sure that it just felt authentic and and yeah it all kind of hummed along together Mm. I mean, we also get to see the king himself on screen uh, I mean, in the form of Rose Byrne. Uh, I mean, seen of Elvis. Oh, do you know what? Go and see. Yeah, uh, you know what? She is spectacular as Elvis. So, how on earth did that come about? Because I know that you went to high school together. So, um, I mean, did you have to bribe her or was she on board straight away? She was on board straight away. Yeah, because we knew that she was going to place a part, but we couldn't quite figure out what part would be like big enough and sort of curious enough and interesting that would be also spike her own um, creativity. And I was living in New York at the time, um, and I was going to bed to do, and then I started thinking about with all the stuff that I like doing, and I was like, I'd love to play a man. I'd love to go on set already as mm. a different gender that would be so cool because part of the craft you just you want to dig into deep, different skin and see what you can get away with and what you can kind of find in yourself and all those things um and she play elvis she's like beautiful like elvis she's got those lips she's got those those eyebrows the sort of the doughy eyes she's got the great hair she just she she would make a great elvis regardless mm. of the gender swap and the, you know, it's almost Elvis's part where it, where the movie's ends of <laughs> why she, yeah, why she chooses to get her kicks doing Elvis. Yeah, what her whole, what her whole journey is. But, um, yeah, Rose jumped on board straight away. She loved that. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, uh, you know, 
Elvis's journey in the mo- mo- movie is really good as well. Um, so, so yeah, so we get a load of personate, uh, impersonators on the screen. But you, but we also, I mean, I watched the film with my wife, and I, I was straight straight away saying that is Danny Minogue. That is really Danny Minogue. And <laughs> how on earth did you get Danny? I mean, I presume that wasn't Kylie, but it was Danny. Um, I mean, how 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 did you get her involved? Because that's that's pretty awesome, right? That was I. That, that's actually that's the second time in my life that I was genuinely starstruck. Um, the other time was Sally Fields, and that time was she. So okay, so she we had Minnie Minogue, which is a a well known impersonator of Kylie Minogue, but she really. She's she, she's really Mini Minogue most of most of their life, um, and they know each other. They're all good friends. Um, and Tim Chapel, who it was our costume designer, knows Danny and asked if she would want to come up and do it, play herself as a, mm. an impersonator. And she said yes. And I I was like sweating. Going, <laughs> is she here? <laughs> I mean, I grew up with like young talent time. I love Kylie and Danny. They're everything. I was just listening to Kylie Buzz like some hype music before <laughs> before doing these interviews. <laughs> so I and Rose was obsessed with Kylie growing up. So Danny was an absolute legend. She flew up, little part. She was um, beautiful and generous and just super cool. And I was totally uncool mm-hmm. and just like sweating all over, going, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm just really nice." <laughs> I was like such a dog, <laughs> but yeah, Danny. Danny was she's as sweet as she looks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've met her once, once before, only by by accident. I was stood next next one. I turned around, I had to do, double take, and I was like, "You're right." And she's like, "Hello." <laughs> she's just lovely. She really is in person as well. Um, I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, writing this this amazing story i mean what is it been like to actually now hear the feedback and you know watch it on the screen that's come from that seed it must be incredible because this film is such a journey of self-discovery and it's got so many emotions from laughter and i may have shed a tear a couple of times uh towards towards the end um because you can't help but fall in love with red and and literally her journey uh, is just incredible. So what's it like to actually see it now on screen? Well, it it has been part of the journey just felt really earned. Mm. And I say that in the most grounded way because it, because we've all been working so hard on it and you know, we opened at South by Southwest um we had our world premiere there, which is in Austin, Texas. And although we hadn't even, no one had seen it because of COVID, there was no test screenings or any of those other usual things. And, but I also kind of went, oh, oh well, just have to, just, this is, feels pretty normal. We've just got to go through and, and do it. But at the moment, it's interesting, Brian. It's, I feel like kind of really emotional about it and really like, I can't quite believe that anyone is going to go and see it and and then some people and then of course people go and see it and then I hear and they have nice feedback like you just said and then I feel yeah I feel kind of really emotional and um and oh, yeah I just feel so mixed I feel so mixed it's not what I'm saying is it's not like I'm like laying here going basking in the glory of all my hard work i'm really still kind of going through it i guess Mm. um because it's still kind of coming out in the world and um and i'm also scared i'm I'm scared that i'm scared that you know uh, maybe heaps heaps of people they will heaps of people won't like it heaps of people will go oh i don't want to go and say you know that's not a biopic about dolly parton not what i thought um there's so many critics out there. It's interesting. There's so many people that are critics that that write it up, and there it is on the internet. And you're like, oh, okay. But the thing so, is, there's so there's there there are critics out there that their job is solely to destroy things, and I think that we need to look at you know what 
something means and and personally what you take away i mean i mean what is your intention for audiences to take away from this movie yeah i i there's two parts to to answer that i guess i don't want to tell anybody what they're going to feel or take away or because it's entirely entirely up to their own experience what I found doing this film is it, it really did remind me to check in with my my own identity mm. and just remind myself that I'm a different person than what I was last year versus who I was 10 years ago. Mm. Because I think we can all forget that. We can all be going, it's maybe an especially actresses or I don't know. But you're, you're, trying, you're on a journey and trying to get somewhere and you're trying to show people or tip or create who you are and how you want to be and how you want to be taken seriously and um, what what's your sort of image and you're trying to figure out your fashion and you you can get really stuck trying to be successful and therefore stay on one identity journey mm. when really, you know, we've, you, you change, like you, you change and that's good and that's okay and it's a little treasure box of diamonds in your chest that just give them a shine and change their shape if you've if you've changed don't mm. don't try and keep a journey of i am a doctor and so that's how i'm going to be you know what i mean yeah i mean i'm that's changing what it's reminding all the time. me to do <laughs> you know i <laughs> yeah. don't know what journey i want to be when i grow up current cur- currently i want to be a cowboy but you know we'll see how that goes on but uh i mean one of the last last quest qu- qu- questions i've got for you crew is is this show this film is so incredible you know is there any plans may maybe of taking it to a stage production we have i haven't thought about it for a long time but we have thought about it because of all the obvious reasons um <laughs> reminded me to think about it again <laughs> <laughs> because i think it would be amazing on stage i really do but crew you've been a great guest thank you so much uh it's been an honor uh i've really enjoyed the movie uh so out on the uh, 13th of february the day before valentine's day here in the uk so um it's a perfect film but crew you've been a great <laughs> guest keep safe and stay super my love thank you so much mm-hmm.